Welcome to Harvest Valley Worship Center's Sermon of the Week. You can discover more about our church, pastors, and special guests at hvwc.com. We hope that you are blessed by today's message. So I want to talk about the Holy Spirit at work through honor and how the Holy Spirit works in honor. Um, in our culture of honor series, we define honor as learning to treat people the way that God treats them, not just the way that we want to treat people, based on their Amen. behaviors, based on their actions, things like that. Now, one of the things that I'm always reminded of is that when you make a mess, you got to clean it up. Yeah. Amen. Right? So honor doesn't say that you never have to clean up a mess. Right. Grace doesn't say that when you get it wrong, you don't have to try and make it right. Come on. Amen. Amen. Well, what honor does is it says, I believe that what God is saying about you is greater than what you're doing at the moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that what God is doing in you is more powerful than what you've seen in your life up to this point. Come on, hallelujah. So honor says, I can treat you as if you're a new creation, even when you're not acting like it. Come on. <laughs> How hard is that? Right. Lord, have Lord have mercy. Okay, we need abundant grace in our lives to see people the way that God sees them. Amen. God believes in you more than you believe in yourself. Come on. He knows what he set you free from, even if you still feel like you're in bondage. Right. He's the one who sets us free. Okay. Yeah. I had a great conversation this week with a guy who's trying to start a ministry. Uh, to minister to people, I'm going to connect Kevin and Micah with him because he owns a lot of property and he's building houses and has horses. <laughs> I'm like, I think I might know somebody <laughs> to help you. Uh, but, but he's like, how many rules do I put in place on people's behavior? And I said, well, whenever you establish a rule, it should be a boundary for the sake of safety. And it ultimately should lead people to connect to Jesus. Yeah. yeah. It should lead people, any boundaries that you set for the sake of safety, and I've talked about this, like, if you want to serve in kids' church, we do a background check. That's just a rule. Right. Right? For the sake of safety. If you're going to lead, there's a certain level of maturity that you've got to carry in order to do that. Okay. Great. So, so we make sure that we're, we're, we're doing things like that for the sake of safety. And yet, people are free yeah. to choose to do whatever they want to do with it. Yeah. Right. Right. Now, what I think is really important when you establish rules and boundaries that you hear what the Holy Spirit is saying before you take action. Amen. Because oftentimes what God is wanting to do will require something different than you are comfortable with. Come on, right? Every time. <laughs> Almost every, all the every time. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, every time, pretty much. Right? So um, I wanna I wanna just deal with our hearts this morning about judgments that we make. Come on. Because the Holy Spirit came to do some things in the earth. And one of the things that is always helpful for me to remember is that when the Holy Spirit is at work, there are some things happening that I don't get the privilege of seeing. Right? There's a mystery about what God is doing, and I don't get to see all the pieces of what God is doing. So I actually have to trust that the Holy Spirit is at work when I can't see. Amen. Right? Amen. So a couple examples, but I'm going to talk about, um, understand this, from John 16, I'm going to read verses 8 through 11. This is uh, about the work of the Holy Spirit. This is at the Last Supper, and Jesus is saying, it is better that I go away so that the Holy Spirit can come. Right? Can you imagine Jesus said, like, these guys are like, you're the Messiah. What's better than you? Right? <laughs> and he says, no, it's actually better that I'm not here because I'm sending the Holy Spirit to you. And he's going to be in you. He's going to work in you. He's going to be with you to do my will and to point to me. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And he's available to all of us. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. All right. So John 16, Jesus says, And when he, the Holy Spirit, has come, 
He will convict the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Okay? Now, when he's talking about the world, right, he's talking about those who have yet to make Jesus Lord of their life. What's the Holy Spirit's role in people who don't know Jesus? To convict them of sin. Right? He says this very clearly. I'm going to convict the world of sin. The Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin. So, it's our awareness of the failures, faults, and failings in our own actions and behaviors often that wakes us up to our need for a Savior. Yeah. I, I didn't know I needed Jesus till I found my brokenness. Right. And my, my brokenness happened to be after a horrific breakup with a fiancé and dealing with my alcoholism to the point where like, I'm in this huge blowout fight with my ex-fiancé at the house because I had spent all of our money on alcohol and partying. And she was like, I'm done with this. <clears throat> my dad calls me. Hey, Chris, do you need a place to stay? I'm getting kicked out. Yep. <laughs> I do, in fact. Right? So the Holy Spirit knew exactly what I needed in my brokenness. He knew what I needed. And I went and stayed with my dad. I was there for a few days. And then uh, uh, that following Sunday, I gave my life to Christ. Amen. That was like Come a on. Tuesday. Because the bank statement showed up on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tuesday is the blowout. I'm, I drive down. I was about an hour away from where my dad lived and, and just stayed with my dad. It took me a few days to sober up because I, I was a little bit on a bender at that point. By the time I got sober, showed it. He's like, listen, you can stay here. You just got to go to church. That was the only role. Like, you stay here, but go to church. So I go to church, same church I'd grown up in, same pastors that I'd known for years, this little Assembly of God church in Salem, Oregon. I show up, and they give an altar call, if you want to give your life to Jesus, step out my aisle right now, and I was so broke. I, like, the Spirit was convicting me of my brokenness, and I knew I needed God. And I stepped in the aisle, I just gave my life to Christ right there. Come on. And all my brokenness, I said so yes. Right? So it's the Holy Spirit that convicts us of sin. Saying, listen, your life, here's your brokenness. I'm going to put this in front of you because you need me. Yeah, right? Right? Amen. This is what the Spirit does with those who need Jesus. Now, it doesn't solve all our problems. Darn it. <laughs> I wish it did. It doesn't. I still battle with addiction. I still battle with the struggles about my identity and who I was. I mean, it took a long road to get out. And that ugly thing wants to creep up every once in a while and rear its ugly head. And i got to deal with that. Right? Come on. Is it okay if I, can I, can I be vulnerable? Yes. 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 I still got to deal with all that stuff, but the Holy Spirit is now doing something different in my life. Right. The Holy Spirit now convicts me of what's right. Come on. Amen. Amen. See, because he says of righteousness, I'm going to convict the world of sin because they don't believe and I'm of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. So he says, listen, if you believe in me, you don't see me anymore, but the Holy Spirit's going to convict you of righteousness, of what is right, right thinking, right doing. So the Holy Spirit in our lives is pointing us to what is right in every situation. Amen. And the flesh, the old man, the dead man that we like to just hunker down and carry around and <laughs> like like we like we all like this old guy this dead thing we carry it around as if it's real as if it's alive it's not it's dead yeah. Yeah. but what we do is we then say you know, as Christians we just point to the sin as right. Christians we think the Holy Spirit's here to point at all your failures we think the Holy Spirit's convicting you of everywhere where you're going wrong that the Holy Spirit's here to convict you and bring shame into your life. That the Holy Spirit's here to make you feel as low as possible as a Christian so that maybe you'll perform better. Right? That's not the work of the Holy Spirit. We are very twisted up. Amen. The work of the Holy Spirit points you to Him, points you to what's right, to righteousness. 
So in the midst of your garbage, he says, I'm over here. <laughs> Come on. When you're feeling down and you're like in this place of despair, he says, I have a new way for you. I have a hope for you. I have light for you. There is righteousness for you over here. Come on. That is the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I believe that in the believer's life, there must be a realignment of our understanding that as believers, our lives are not to be focused on sin. Amen. Amen. Come on. No, don't sin. Can I just say, right? you probably shouldn't be pursuing sin. Come on. Amen. You should not be pursuing things that are not good for you, that are not healthy, that are not God's design for your life. Why would you pursue that? Right. The Holy Spirit is in you to point you to right living, right doing, right thinking. So, the beautiful thing about the Holy Spirit is he's always pointing us towards righteousness. He's pointing us towards his perfect goodness in our lives every single moment. Honor flows as we reveal the work of the Holy Spirit. The believer is to point to what is good. Amen. Yeah. We are to point to what is right and what is just in people. I hate conflict. Does anybody enjoy conflict? <laughs> I hate it. I don't like it. I, I've had a bad pattern in my life that you know, when certain types of conflicts come up, I'm like, I think I'm going to go hermit for a little while. I'm going to isolate. I'm not going to have conversations. And yet that conflict often is about what's happening in me. How many of us, when we've been in conflict, thought we knew what the other person was thinking? <laughs> right. Every time. Isn't yeah. it hilarious? I think it's great. That every time there's conflict, we go, they must be thinking all these bad things about me. What if whenever we mind read, whenever we thought about what someone else was thinking, it was always good? <laughs> right? Come on. Amen. Meditate on these things. Right? What, so if, what if when there's kind of like, well, they must just not understand. They, there must be a great reason for this. <laughs> right? <laughs> Come on. They must be, like, I'm wondering what I did. Right? Like, instead of pointing the finger, which is judgment. Yeah. Right? Now, there's a godly discernment that requires us to discern and to judge things. Right. And you know what's interesting is behaviors often point to what's in our hearts. Like, what we do, the actions that we take, often tells us what's in our hearts. Okay. And when we make a mess, we have to go clean that up. Yeah. Are you guys, are we in agreement? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what's really nice is that when we understand that when I make mistakes and I make a mess, I can go to the Father and He points me to do what is right. Come on. If that's cleaning up my mess and that's the right thing to do, He's going to point me to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, God opposes the proud and He gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. So in my pride, if I'm unwilling to do the cleanup, I'm getting opposed by God. Right. Yeah. Humility says, I'll do whatever it takes to make it right. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Just just want to touch base on this because we have to understand what the work of the Holy Spirit is and how do we honor people. Right. Now, then he says, um, the enemy, right? He talks about the enemy. He says, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. The Holy Spirit has judged the devil and we walk in the same judgment that God has towards the enemy. Come on. What does that mean? We, we can find out what the enemy's doing, but we've got to call out what it is as the work of the enemy, not of people. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Because the ruler of this world has been judged, we must understand that the Holy Spirit isn't pointing out the devil's work, he points to the judgment on the devil. Oh, say that again. He's not pointing out everything the devil's doing. He's saying it's already judged. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's done. Imagine if we lived our lives instead of fearing what the enemy is going to do and what he's doing, we go, ha, that's judged. Yeah. 
Amen. When we see what the enemy's doing, we go, nope, the Holy Spirit's already judged that. That, that right. can't stand. Because yes. the on. Spirit of God has judged it. Wow. Amen. Instead, we go, oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, did you, did you read the news? Oh, now it's getting real. <laughs> <laughs> did you see what that person said? Oh, that person spoke a heresy. Oh. <laughs> we freak out. We get filled with fear instead of judging what the enemy's done. Right? Come on. Said, no, the Holy Spirit already judged that. Amen. Right? Here's a liar. Now, Amen. let me tell you what happens when we understand honor and we understand the word of the Holy Spirit. You will walk in utter confidence about what God is doing, what the devil's doing, or what your role is. Come on. When you can begin to grasp that, listen, the Spirit's only going to point me to what's right and what is good. Amen. And when I see the enemy at work, I can judge it because the Spirit of God is in me. Amen. It's already judged. It's done. Right? And then guess what? I don't have to point to everybody's sin when I witness to them. Come on. I mean, I'm, I like Ray Comfort. <laughs> you guys know, you know yes. Living Waters Ministry, yeah. right? The whole, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, evangelism explosion that came out in the 90s. Right? This, do whatever you can to make sure everybody knows how sinful they are. Because if you can tell them how simple they are through some some funny things like, have you ever stole a pen? Well, you're a thief. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Everybody that the Spirit of God is working on recognizes their brokenness. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Why? What's the work of the Holy Spirit? To point to their brokenness and say, you need a Savior. Right. It's not my job. Yeah. Amen. It's not my job. Hallelujah. <laughs> Not my job. One of the one of the realities of being able to move in power in evangelism is expressing the love and pointing to the goodness of the Father because they need to know that Amen. more than they need Come to see on. their brokenness because they already see it. They right. already know it. And this is tying in the last three messages on culture of honor that we've had. Scott did a great job. How many of you got to see Scott last week? Yeah. Last week. Okay. Watch it online. He did a great job. He did a great job. All right. So, the ruler of this world is judged. Guess what? Jesus doesn't judge us, neither does the Holy Spirit. Did Come you know on. That? Yeah. So, in John 8, Jesus responds to the Pharisees. Right? The Pharisees come to him and they accuse him of having a false witness. Well, you've got a false witness, and he he uh, had, was portraying himself as God, right? He's like, I am the light of the world. Like, what? No, you're witnessing of yourself. You can't do that. You can only witness of God. No man can witness of himself as God, right? This is very clear, right? So the Pharisees are on him, right? Saying, listen, dude, you are off. You are wrong. And Jesus then says this, even if I bear witness of myself, so this is verse 14 of John 8. Even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true, for I know where I came from and where I am going, but you do not know where I come from and where I am going. You judge according to the flesh, I judge no one. Oh, come and yet, on. if I do judge, my judgment is true, for I'm not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. All right. Jesus says he judges no one. And that those who are religious judge according to the flesh. We must be able to live according to the principle that Jesus lived by without judgment towards sinners. We must love them into the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit is revealing the need. And we reveal his love and we point to his righteousness just as the Holy Spirit does in us. Now, this statement of Jesus where he says, um, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. This is the, the statement that the Pharisees are going off about. Do you know that statement came after a very interesting story? That statement came after this moment in the temple in Jerusalem where... It says in, at the beginning of John 8, it says, Early in the morning he came again into the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. 
Now, adultery is a sexual sin, and, and God has been, been very clear that sexual sin is, is painful and it's hurtful to you and to the people around you, right? So God, God does it for our best interest. He talks about sexual sin a lot in the Bible, right? But he says this, when they had set her in the midst, the Pharisees said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. See, the judgment of the religious look for an accusation. Yeah. yeah. Let it not be so among us. Amen. So, Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. I'm not even going to give it. I love Jesus. He just said, I'm not even going to listen to this accusation. <laughs> I got a story to tell. I'm going to sit down here. I'm going to get down here. I'm just going to draw right on the floor of the temple. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience. You know. The way that God made us is to always have, in our spirit, we always have a monitor of what is right and what is wrong. This is why the Holy Spirit can convict so easily, because our conscience tells us what is true and what is not. That's why deception is so deceiving, because when we are deceived, our conscience is not clear. Right. Right. Now, those who are being convicted by their conscience went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I see you in your brokenness. I'm not judging you. In your brokenness, I'm not judging you. Go and sin no more. Find me and just... Now you're empowered because you see truth. You now have life. Now go. You see the truth. Now go. Do, don't do that anymore. Right? It's because of the revelation of who God is and the fact that he doesn't judge us that actually empowers us to live without sin. Yeah. Come on. So, Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The flesh points to the sin, the failure, believes the worst in people instead of the best, judging according to the flesh, but the adultery on display for the world to judge. Judging according to the flesh will always put your sin on display. Yeah. Judging according to the flesh points to what's wrong instead of what's right. Learning how to honor one another will always point to what is right in each other. Come on. Yeah. Now, again, sometimes that can be very difficult because you don't feel right to do it sometimes. How many of you have been like, I, how do I honor that? That behavior is unacceptable. Right. How do I honor that? Call out who they are according to who God says they are. Yeah. Sometimes we need to have a conversation that says, I know you're acting like that, but that's not who God says you are. Yep. Come on. I'm not judging it. I love you. Right? No matter what, there's nothing you can do about it. Yep. And in that place, call them to a higher place. They have a choice. 
They get to choose what they're going to do with that. But it's not our place to judge that. Now, there's accountability and there's responsibility. We have to hold people accountable. We have to have responsibility. But we can do it with honor according to their God-given name, not the aliases that they've been given by themselves or, their, or other people in their life. Come on, amen. And that draws them higher, draws them into those places. So, thinking about this adultery thing, you know, when we choose to believe what God says about people, we can see the sin and call them into their true identity. And listen, there may be consequences. Like, in that situation, there was a broken relationship that had to be restored. There was something that had to happen with the pain that adultery causes. Right? And that's close to the heart. There may be consequences. A husband to go home to. A family to restore. But there can be no lasting change if the focus is solely on sin. Amen. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Well, I think God's giving us an opportunity today to just hear what he has to say about you. Because we all have our own brokenness. Would you agree? Yeah. We all have our own brokenness. We all have areas that I know fall short of his glory. And God is calling us to remember he's pointing us to what is right so that we can be free from what is wrong. Amen. The whole point of him, the Spirit of God, pointing us to righteousness is so that we are no longer bound to sin. Amen. Yeah. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much that your Spirit is here and at work. Mm -hmm. Lord, we are asking for an encounter with your goodness and your righteousness. Yeah, come on. Spirit of God, I'm asking that you just begin to reach into every heart this morning, that they would understand and know and hear what you're pointing to in their life, that you're pointing them to what is right and what is good. Father, as you speak to us through the Holy Spirit, I'm asking that you would affirm us according to the identity that you've given us. That you begin to speak who you say we are. Mm -hmm. and that we no longer listen to the lies of what we've been told in our past. Father, I pray that you help us clean up our messes. Help us take a road of humility. Father, we want to walk in your favor, not in opposition to you. Amen. So teach us, God. Show us, God. Lord, I'm asking that you would teach us how to reveal your love to the world around us. That we would be a different kind of Christian. Instead of pointing to sin, we point to your goodness. We reveal your goodness alone. Yeah. Yes. That instead of pointing to failures and faults, that we begin to reveal your goodness in the lives of the people around us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people need to know what you think about them. Because they've never heard it. So teach us how to speak the way you speak. Yes, to see what you see. Give us your heart yeah. for people, God. Yes, God. Give us your heart for people. Come on, let's put our hands on our hearts right now and just begin to ask God, God, give me your heart for the lost. Give me, for the give me your heart for the broken. Give me your heart for people who don't know you. Come on, just begin to ask them right now. God, give me your heart for those people that don't know you that I might speak life into them. Give me your heart, God. Thank you for joining us today. Harvest Valley Worship Center is called to be a refuge for healing and a launch pad for transformation. If this message impacted you today, please let us know in a comment, or you can email us at media at hvwc.com. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to connecting with you.